This is a topic that comes up a lot in my law practice. How do you get a quick and dirty patent application on file if you're in a real hurry? Now this can happen if you have a next day meeting with a manufacturer or a potential licensee and you want to get a patent application on file before you disclose your invention. Or maybe you have a full-time job and your evenings are spent working on prototypes and changing diapers and you just don't have time to write a formal patent application. Or maybe you just hate to write and you're not ready yet to hire a patent attorney to help you write up a formal document. Then this video is for you because today we're going to talk about preparing a quick and dirty provisional patent application. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. Now the provisional patent application is an informal document. You're going to prepare and file your application and you'll get a filing receipt back from the patent office. But that's it. There's no feedback from a patent examiner. A patent examiner never examines your application. And also it's important to note that there'll be no reminder that your 12 month period for expiration of the provisional application is coming due. And aside from never being examined, there's nothing in the patent code or the patent rules that requires formality in the preparation of the patent application. There's no requirement as far as I can tell that prevents you from handwriting your patent application in crayon and preparing your figures in watercolors. The only requirement for your provisional patent application, there needs to be sufficient detail in your provisional patent application to fully support the teaching of your invention. So this begs the question, if there's no examination of the provisional patent application, who cares whether there's sufficient detail or not? Why even bother with the detailed description? Well, there are two circumstances in which your provisional application will be reviewed. Now, the first circumstance occurs after you file your non-provisional patent application later. And the way this arises is that the examiner finds some prior art and rejects the, the claims in your original patent application. And to overcome the claims, you'll make amendments to your patent claims, adding some new elements to the patent claims. Now, unfortunately, the elements that you want to add are not described in sufficient detail in the non-provisional patent application. So you go back to the provisional patent application and you import some new elements from the original filing. In this case, the examiner will likely go back to the provisional patent application and verify that there was sufficient detail in the original provisional to support the new claim element. Now let's try a simple example. Let's say your invention is curved handlebars for a bicycle and the handlebars have rubber hand grips. Now this may seem like a silly example, but handlebars are important. Now after examination, the examiner may come back to you and say, hey, bicycle handlebars are pretty well known and adding rubber hand grips to the bicycle handlebars seems pretty obvious since wheelbarrows have rubber hand grips and so do pogo sticks. So it would be obvious to add rubber hand grips to bicycle handlebars. Now after reviewing your formal patent application, you realize you don't have that much more to add to the patent claims to differentiate those claims over the prior art that was discovered by the examiner. So you go back to your original provisional patent application and you notice a photograph with handlebar streamers coming out of the prototype of your handlebars. And even though the handlebar streamers in the provisional patent application were not described in the formal application, it's possible to import those handlebar streamers and include those in the rejected patent claims. And handlebar streamers are kind of magical. Who doesn't love handlebar streamers? And of course, the examiner's convinced and the patent claims with the handlebar streamers incorporated get allowed and the patent issues. Now the second circumstance in which there's a possibility that your provisional application may get examined is if and when litigation occurs over your issued formal application. Now the way this arises is that you're in litigation because someone's infringing your patent and you accuse them of infringing, you sue them for patent infringement, and their defense is that, hey, we found this magazine article that was published before you filed your patent application describing the invention. 
Now in that case, you can go back to the provisional patent application, assuming the provisional was filed before the magazine article was published. You can rely on the provisional patent application to predate the magazine article. However, there must be sufficient detail and must be sufficient description in the provisional patent application to demonstrate that you had understood and described the invention at that prior date. So as you can see, it's pretty infrequent that a provisional patent application ever gets looked at after it's filed. But when it does get looked at, it's very important that the provisional patent application have the sufficient detail needed to support the later patent application and patent claims. Okay, informality aside, I still think there's some really important parts that need to be included in the provisional patent application to make sure it's complete. If you're interested in learning more about provisional patent applications, let me recommend my new book, <laughs> Provisional Patents, and this is the 16th edition. It contains lots of details about the provisional patent application. The book is in full color and there are QR codes throughout the book that you can scan with your smartphone to jump to videos about the section. Anyway, the book is available on Amazon in hardback, softback, and in Kindle version. If you haven't had a chance yet to check it out, I urge you to go over to Amazon and pick up a copy. Now, every provisional patent application should start with an interesting and specific title. The title is so important, but it's often overlooked. Make the title descriptive and interesting. You never know when an investor may be looking at the title of your provisional patent application and deciding whether to make an investment or not. Or perhaps you're licensing the patent to someone and they're gonna be interested in what's in the patent and the way they judge what's in the patent is based on the title. So instead of titling your provisional patent application just bicycle handlebars, consider something like stability enhancing bicycle handlebars with ergonomic hand grips. Now I always like to start patent applications with a short summary or just an abstract of the invention. This is just a short section of descriptive sentences that explain what the invention is how it's built and how to use it, usually just one paragraph. And I just wanna be able to read the patent application or get a summary of the patent application without having to look through the whole document. Now the third section after the title and the summary are the figures. And I think the figure section can be so valuable in a provisional patent application because figures can be very informal. They can be sketches, photographs. I was joking earlier that they could be done in watercolor. Really, there's no formality requirements for the figures, but a picture paints a thousand words, and the more figures you can include, even, as I said, photographs of, your, of a prototype can be very helpful later in supporting the invention that you'll be trying to claim in your non-provisional patent application when you get ready to write that possibly a year later. When thinking about the figures, I like to start with a high-level view. So if I built a prototype bike with my prototype handlebars, I would have started with a photograph maybe of the entire bike containing the handlebars with the streamers. And then since the inventive component was my handlebars, I would have taken a separate photo of the handlebars containing the hand grips and the streamers. And then after that, focus in on the various pieces of the handlebars, maybe the curves and the bends, the way the handlebar connects, the hand grips, how the hand grips connect, but just a series of photographs, sketches, drawings, explaining in pictures, explaining the invention. And then finally, the last section of the quick and dirty provisional patent application is an explanation of the invention. And this may not need to be a long section. You wanna explain how the invention is built, and how the invention is used. And your figures will be very valuable here. If you've done a good job of organizing your figures, then the detailed description section should really assemble itself. And in many quick and dirty provisional patent applications, it may be sufficient just to attach another document to the back of the application. It could be a PowerPoint deck or maybe a description you've previously written about the invention or a white paper on the invention. If you're presenting your invention at a trade show, you may have prepared a brochure that you can attach to the back of your patent application as the detailed description. Or 
or possibly you're giving a technical paper at a symposium or some kind of conference. Just take the conference paper prior to presenting the paper and attach it to the back of the provisional patent application and file that. But the point is there's no real formality requirements. The only requirement is that you sufficiently teach the invention in enough detail so someone of ordinary skill in the art of your invention can look at your provisional patent application and understand how to build it and use it. If you'd like to learn more about provisional patent applications, I think you'll find my provisional patent application playlist super helpful. I'll see you over there.